let the people know that we're live. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we need music. <laughs> live in the studio. That would be fun. Yeah. And some music. We could have played Life music. Life with Riley. We could have played music coming out of the speakers. We're live in the podcast live studio. Live in the podcast recording studio. Right here at Union You just University. had someone, God's Kid 2021, joined. Oh, Yay. So fun. This it's, is so fun. This is, fun. this is recording day. And um, we're so glad that we have this studio on the campus of Union University because uh, this is not anybody's home. <laughs> It makes us sound fancy. <laughs> this setup is not in anybody's home. So we have self-taught. We were a couple of people that had no idea what we were doing in the podcast world, but came together because we think it's so super important and necessary and needed and helpful to all of our lives to make sure that we're listening to voices that encourage us and make us laugh. And that is what we want to do, right? That's right. Okay, so if it's I, not fun, we're not doing it. That's so we're glad y'all are here. That has been my motto for a long time. If it is not fun, I'm not doing it because life is hard enough. It's stressful enough. Everybody is exhausted and worn out, and so we've got to have some fun. And this is crazy fun. It's fun to do new things. It's fun to do new things. It's fun. It's fun to be on TikTok. So we're <laughs> glad y'all are with us. <laughs> Someone said, "What studio is it?" What studio? So this studio is a. It's a real live recording studio. Clearly. Um, and we are on the campus of Union University. It's where I happen to work. My name is Fran. I'm part of the combo here. And I work here, and we have a recording studio in our library. And so, did we know how to do any of this? No, but we learned, and we figured it out. Well, by we, Fran means Fran figured it out. I just get to show up and talk and have fun with y'all. So Yeah, this is fun. So, job, today, Fran. we record. Normally, we don't record, like, the day before we release an episode. So we release every Tuesday. You can find us on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Google Podcast. I don't know, all the places, anywhere you would listen to a podcast. You can find us there. YouTube. Uh, YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel. You can watch some of the Zoom recordings that we've done. But um, anyway, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, we normally don't record the day before, but we had to. So episodes come out every Tuesday. Tomorrow's yeah. Tuesday. We, we are real life crazy. We work, we have husbands, we have kids, we have dinner to cook mm-hmm. sometimes. We trying have, to get to an exercise class. Trying to get to exercise class. All the things. My dog comes home from college later oh, today. Oh, that's right. My are one we going to talk about this? <laughs> my one-eyed golden retriever has been at training school, and we have a story about swans on my farm that includes some nervous swan diarrhea and a near-death experience. And so, a community guidelines violation. And we violated the TikTok community vi- guidelines accidentally. So you're going to hear about, and I'm a lawyer, I should, I should know better. So you're going to hear about lots of things on this podcast episode, which is true to who we are. We ramble yeah. about serious, ridiculous, spiritual, everything in between. Well, and what's so fun is our friendship, we send boxers back and forth. If you do not know what boxers are, you got to have it. It's a great way to communicate. And so we boxer back and forth all the time. And we, this is all this is, is our just random conversations that we do on Boxer, and we still do, but it's like, you know what, let's share with our audience um, what we're talking about and how crazy life is, so. That's right, because one thing we've learned from y'all already on TikTok is you want authenticity, you want to laugh, and a lot of you have asked for prayer, so we're here for that too. Whatever we can do to support and encourage, we're here for it. Yeah. Okay, so we're ready to record. We're ready to record. So show the people how this goes down, Fran. I know. Fran. This Listen, is so fancy. This is crazy. So we, I don't know. I don't even know what to call this stuff. <laughs> the studio. <laughs> this is this stuff. is the technical side of things, and so we're getting ready to hit record. Yeah. Are you ready? Have we sound checked? Are we uh-huh. No, we're we're good. Okay. All right, everybody. Here we go. You ready, Angela? Sure. Okay. Let's go. Okay, Angela, it's a fun day back in the studio. We've had a couple of episodes where we were not in the studio um, or by Zoom or whatever, but today it's just me and you. It is, and, and you know, we miss being in the studio because mm-hmm. of snow. Yeah, I know. Listen, y'all, for anybody that listened to all our episodes, I said we talked about snow like we got feet upon feet upon feet of snow, and 
we didn't, but we loved it so much, and it was fun to talk about it. Well, mm -hmm. and it's it's rare. It's in rare. West Tennessee, and now today it's sixty five yeah, degrees and sunny, and that groundhog in two days <gasps> better not oh, fail us. Oh, I didn't. He better even, not let us down. I didn't think about that. I'm ready for warm weather. I'm so, today is a perfect day for wishing for spring. I'm done with winter. That's right. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is fun, Angela, because as we even talk right this minute, we are recording a live TikTok. <laughs> we we are on TikTok. What in the world? How I don't fun. know. Avery knows because she's been around me long enough to know that um, Avery's one of our students that I know and love, and she's she's filming this right now. But I love TikTok. I, I this is the inner young person that comes out in me that I want to do all the dances. I want to, and I think I can. And, <laughs> I love it all so much. So it's just funny to be saying that we're doing this on, we're recording this right now live on TikTok at our age for well, crying out loud. You need to be doing all the dances because you have good dance moves and, <laughs> and we need to see them more. I have none. I have, where Fran was a cheerleader, I have the cheerleader epic fail tryout story for another day. Uh -huh. But I, I do not need to be dancing on yeah. TikTok. But yeah. it's fun to do other things on TikTok. It's just too. fun. You can do a lot of things on yeah. TikTok. It's not just a like one size fits all. So I hope we're not a Obnoxious, but who cares? Yeah, who cares? <laughs> I, I, they're they're a very forgiving, grace filled community. They are. We, we love it on TikTok. Okay, so if you are on the TikTok, be sure and follow us. How do they find us on TikTok, Angela? We are rambling through life. Yeah, we can't be rambling through everyday life because you know they've only got to allow you four characters or whatever <laughs> for it to fit. That's right. So rambling through life. Rambling through life. Okay, we're there. Okay, we are on TikTok. Okay, so this is an episode, Angela, where you. I I have no idea what we're talking about today. Well, this does not scare me. It scares you. No. It doesn't? No. Okay. This is fun. Okay. This is who we are. This okay. is how we ramble. Okay. Um, first of all, let's just get a little caught up on okay. things that we're watching, things that we're doing in life. Okay. What are you watching right now? Okay. Today? Listen, I'm about to show you my my lack of, of um, well, no, no, no. I'm about to reveal a little bit about who I really am. I just finished on Netflix all both seasons of Cheer. Oh, I love Cheer. I can, I cannot tell you how much I loved that series, that show. I was obsessed with it. I was the cheerleader in high school, and so I watched them from that perspective and be like, "Oh my gosh, y'all are just killing it as a sport." But then the stories, there's stories, there's good storyline and Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. What's the name of the coach? Monica. Monica. I mean, like, she's a great, strong leader. So I'm learning messages from her. Huge cheer fan. And when Navarro College lost in Daytona at the end of season two, I died. I cried. I cried yeah. tears. There's season two is, if, you, if you've watched it, you're going to know what I'm talking about. There's, I've not watched season two yet. There's some tough things in there. Okay. There's some tough storylines in there. I saw some headlines. Yeah. And you wonder how um, they would pull that in. But anyway, it was, I loved it. So that's what I've watched. Now I've asked everybody, you know, what, what do I need to watch on Netflix? I'll watch anything. I will watch something. I love a documentary. I love a series. I love things like Cheer. I love Apple TV. I've watched Ted Lasso. Anyway, have you watched know. Yellowstone? No, oh, I, it's so good. I Yellowstone. Know. I, I don't know why, but there's something that, and it doesn't have anything to do with the language and stuff. But there's just something that's not drawing me into it. it it's one of the. It's hard for my husband and I to find something we both can yeah. watch together. Yeah. But I will say it's very graphic. Yeah. And, I and watch graphic about like in what violence way? against. People? There's style, yeah, you know, time, times are tough <laughs> out in the West. <laughs> uh, I'm not endorsing any of these things for, you know, are we killing moral, people? moral Christian purposes. Oh, yeah, lots okay. of, yeah. Lots what of time that. era are we talking about? Well, there's there's 1883 that's the spinoff that goes way I back. I did not know that. And then Yellowstone okay. is modern day. Okay. But anyway. I don't know. I'm, I'm interested, but I'm not. Yeah. I don't know. That's okay. Anyway. That's okay. Okay, um, Wordle. Yes. <laughs> Let's okay. talk about Wordle. Are y'all okay. addicted to Wordle? Yes. Okay. If it wasn't for the people that I follow on Twitter, I had no idea that Wordle was a thing. And so some of my favorite people started playing. Well, a couple of my work people were also playing. And so, listen, you can, you just tell me one time. It's like, we need to go do whatever. And I'm going to say yes 99 and a half times out of 100. <laughs> And it could be ridiculous. It could be almost borderline criminal. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I'm going to be like, <laughs> but I'm going to be like, yes, yes, let's go do that. So they start talking about Wordle, and I'm like, what the heck is Wordle? And so, what is Wordle? If people don't know, I think Wordle is. I have, this is. A te- I'm not good at stuff like this, but it feels to me like it's. It's like Wheel of Fortune, but better, harder. I don't know. It's and hard. It is hard. And yesterday, I was proud of myself. I got it on the third try. Like, you know, the first row, second row, and then the third row, ding, 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 ding. That's amazing. Yeah, It um, told me that I was um, not perfect. It, well, it should have. It, it should have been perfect. <laughs> Listen, my first Wordle experience, my husband found it before I did, which is funny to us because I used to love Scrabble yeah. and make him play Scrabble, and he hated it. So he's been playing Wordle. I just found it a few days ago. Yeah. Well, I put in all five five mm-hmm. letters, put mm-hmm. in five that were all wrong. Mm-hmm. So and you kind of go, you go back right. to Wheel of Fortune, and you're like R S T L N E. Yes. But that's not a word. <laughs> so one of them was right. I, I said that wrong. One of them was right, but in the wrong place. So Carl comes and looks over my shoulder and is like, oh. Try this. Boom. It was the word. Wow. I fell over. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? But he made me think that he was just really a genius. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that, like, you know, everybody's got the same word. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that's kind of scary because people are going to cheat or, you know, tell you what the word is, Carl Snyder. He cheated. That's all right. Anyway. He had his his moment of genius. Yeah. Okay. Would you like to hear about the swan? Uh, Listen. I have a swan story. Okay. (laughs) We okay. Here's one of those things that the, Angela lives on. I don't know. I'm exaggerating, and don't correct me because I want to exaggerate. But you might as well live on a million acres out in the country, and you have a venue where we have weddings. There's um, a pond, mm-hmm. land for days where people can hunt. I mean, it is exactly what you picture in Tennessee, and all of those things. And so you've got all these different animals. I can't keep up with what you have, what you don't have, what we used to have, what's brand new. But the swans are real. The swans are near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. And so you might as well be talking about one of your kids Mm -hmm. when you start talking about, well, let me tell you what the swan did. Yes. Okay, so. It's like a baby. It is like a baby. They're just people junior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So so the daddy is Mick Swagger. Mick Swagger. There's a whole story. I don't have time for all these stories. But (laughs) Mick Swagger, swans mate for life, and his original wife got eaten. Very sad. Uh, Pond froze over. We, We couldn't rescue her in time. Awful. So... We got him a new wife. Arranged marriages do not often work immediately. <laughs> um, there was this whole big ordeal on how we had to help them along in their relationship. He tried to kill her. He tried to break her neck. Essentially, He's mean. Her. He is mean, but protective. He's okay. protective. Well, that's a nice way to say it. So eventually they fall in love. Took a couple of years. What's then, her name? Um, she didn't have a name? The first one was Eden. This one's Sapphire. Sapphire. I don't know why my son chose Sapphire. She's very white. He named her something very Mick, blue. Swagger, and, and Sapphire, Sapphire are a couple. Are a couple. And they finally, it takes a few years before they can have babies. This okay. was a big deal. They finally laid eggs. They finally had babies. We've had this whole following of everybody checking on these little swan babies. It's been a very big deal to all of us. So... Carl, my husband, it was eight degrees. It was one of the snow days. It was eight degrees. He goes outside to feed the swans, and only Carl would notice this. It was so cold, my eyeballs wouldn't even function outside. But Carl, out of the corner of his eye, notices that one of the swans is not coming up to where he put the food. Okay. The swan stayed on the water. So Carl goes all the way down there. Just he just he He's a bird man. He just knew. So he goes and checks on the swan, and next thing I know, he's got the swan in his arms in my house, and the swan is, like, gasping. So a swan, he has picked up the swan. Huge bird. And not afraid to do that. No, he's not. the swan let him. Well, the swan was in distress. Okay. And carry, and and the, 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 the distance from the water to your house is not just like right around the. I mean, it's it's it's, a, it's like a hundred yards. It's a hundred yards. Yeah. And he, I, I wish that was on video. I wish it was too. And and just you know, what are you doing? Getting ready for work and I like, am. oh hey honey, I'm just living my life. And I'm not. I, I love them from a distance. I don't like beady eyes. I don't like birds hissing at me. I don't like 
wings they're very strong mm -hmm. anyway so so Carl brings this swan into my house I also don't like things used in the bathroom in my house that aren't potty trained this swan comes in my house in this box I could smell something there were all kinds of things going on the swan is gasping <laughs> the swan is choking on something we called every vet we could call nobody wants to talk about exotic animals they would not help us we even had a retired professor from Union, somebody gave us their number, mm -hmm. got voicemail, called our local wildlife resource. Yeah. Was this a weekend or a this, weekday? This was a weekday. Okay. But long story short, Carl is, um, finally he calls the man we got the swans from, and they say, you have to massage it out of his neck. I'm sorry, what? You have to massage it out of his neck. Does he know how to do this? In some weird way he does. Well, he required my assistance. <laughs> So I need y'all to imagine my husband telling me that I have to come hold, bear hug a swan with strong flapping wings with nervous swan diarrhea squirting everywhere. And I'm holding this thing down and I'm terrified that this thing is going to bite me even though he has no teeth and my husband's hand is all the way down his throat. Angela, what time of day is all of this taking place? Early morning. Oh my gosh. Excuse Early me morning, while I have morning. a sip of coffee I'm, here. I'm not fully caffeinated at this point. It really didn't matter. <laughs> so Carl is able to, to remove some things, some grass, but he could tell there was something else in the swan's throat. Just stick his hands down his throat? Yes. Okay. And then he said, I need something with a hook. So I'm, I'm, I'm like looking for pliers. I'm looking for tweezers. I'm scared tweezers are going to fall down his throat. We even looked at the vacuum cleaner and thought for a minute about putting the vacuum cleaner hose down the swan's throat. We did not know what to do. What is he, is he making a sound? He was gasping and it, he was getting relief when we were pulling some of the, I say we, I did nothing to well, him. You were, yes, you were. You I, were holding him. I was holding him. Um, so anyway, we, um, we eventually, I found, a, I don't even remember the name. They were in Millington, Tennessee, a, a clinic an hour away. And they said, get him here. We'll help you. I just kept calling <laughs> anybody I could find. Buckle so, up, baby. Here we go. Long <laughs> story short, $400 later, the swan had swallowed some fishing line. Where'd the fishing line come from? Who knows? Somebody had fished in the oh. pond, and, and apparently, I, I don't even know. Okay, so, 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 so Carl says, well, we're going to have to get in the truck. Yeah. Me and the swan, there's got to be a way we've got to share this video. Well, Carl made a TikTok inspired by us. Okay. Him. We've actually inspired one person on TikTok. Uh -huh. My husband made a TikTok of him and the swan and we will figure out how to share it here because it's the funniest thing. It is the funniest thing. He's just he's just sitting in the front seat. Well at this with point the seat belt on? At this point the swan is full of anesthesia. <laughs> And How did drunk. he get anesthesia? Well, from the vet. So he made the oh, he oh, made the video when they were coming home. Okay. Oh, that's right. And, and that's the swan right. had been but knocked out. But getting him there. How did he get him there? The the swan was in a big rubbermaid box, just a big tote. And big did not tote. have any desire to get out. He, was, he knew he couldn't. I think he was hurting enough. Okay. So Carl the next day thought, you know what? The swan has loved on me. I saved his life. Now we're going to be friends. Okay. This is fantastic. So it's 20 degrees. It's a little bit warmer. And Carl goes down to the water to check on the pond, on the swan. Well, the daddy, Mick Swagger, starts hissing Me angrily. Snake, I'm telling chased you. Chased him back up the hill. <laughs> so Carl looks at the dad like, you know, you little ingrate. I saved your kid's life. Well, then the other swan that he saved just is not having anything to do with him. And Carl said it really hurt his feelings. And then almost instantly he realized, you know what? I do the Lord the same way every single day. Mm -hmm. He saved my life mm -hmm. and I just act like, no big deal. Mm -hmm. So there was, there, the swan got spiritual mm -hmm. for a minute. So how but is the swan now? Is the, he okay? The swan is okay with one exception. We realized in the middle of this that the swan does not have a name. Well, yeah, because I'm sitting here thinking we haven't called him anything. Right. And when you spend $400 at the vet and have a near-death experience, the mm -hmm. swan needs a name. So you and I were laughing about what the swan name could be. That's it needs right. to be a survivor name because yes. the swan is a survivor. Yes. So I immediately thought Destiny's Child, mm -hmm. I'm a survivor, mm -hmm. or Reba, mm -hmm. I'm a survivor. Mm -hmm. So we need y'all's help. Is it Destiny or is it Reba? Mm -hmm. We need y'all to help us figure this is out. Is it a boy or a girl? A girl. A girl. Those would be terrible boy names. I know, because I was like, you yeah. know, okay. It is a girl. Okay, so. it is a girl. Well, and she's, she's a survivor. Gonna, she is a survivor, and she's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. I'm sure everybody has experienced that in their lifetime. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Welcome to owning a farm. Right. Uh -huh. Never a dull moment. Never a dull and moment. And there's always some kind of lesson from. And I just on the I hate it that Nick, that Daddy is so mean. Well, he's protective. And so that's just the way he is. Yeah. Okay. He always thinks Carl is after his woman. Oh. Because <laughs> Carl brings food, so he's the meanest to Carl. He's really not mean to anybody else. Bless. But he thinks my husband wants his woman. Okay. Well, there you have it, people. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Wasn't that fun? I would have died. <laughs> died. Absolutely. I'm not I'm not holding a bird. I'm yeah. not I mean I want him to live, but I would be screaming and so scared the whole time that I that was. bird is gonna kill me. I was. I was. I grew up in the city. I'm not good at any of yeah. these things. Twenty five years later, yeah. but the swan's alive. My husband's a hero. The only thing that we've ever had traumatic in our house with an animal was, I don't remember, it's been years, 10 years ago. I was upstairs and I heard Chip, my husband, throw something to the ground. And I thought either something is broken or what did he throw on the ground? And we had a baby copperhead no. at the bottom of our stairs. In your house. Inside my home. A baby copperhead just all curled up. Where's the mama copperhead? Where's the mama? Um, so anyway, we had to call a neighbor because we are not like Carl. Like, mm -hmm. we panic and run and like, you know, I don't know. What burn the house burn down. Burn the dang house down. <laughs> and so we had to call a neighbor. And that neighbor, this is what you do if you ever have a baby copperhead in your house, a snake. Um, he got the, the, the things off the grill, the tongs, your big extra long, and just went down and scooped up that mm -mm. Mm -mm. copperhead took it outside got a shovel mm -mm. cut the head off that was the end of that had to pay somebody an arm and a leg to come out the next day to look for the mom wow had to have certain parts of the house sealed so that if another snake were to ever get in so that just traumatized i'm like i'm done uh -huh. people mm -hmm. yeah. i ain't saving nobody every time i look at my vacuum cleaner i think i'm so <laughs> Can you imagine if we had tried to stick that vacuum cleaner down the swan's throat? But in that moment of crisis, yeah. you're like, whatever I have to do. I think it's precious that you wanted him to live. Who when knows swan live. CPR? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's Certainly a fun story. Us. Okay. Okay, what next? Now what are we going to talk about? Everything else is going to be well, stupid. You know, true, true to who we are, we have to swing from super ridiculous to super spiritual. Okay. Are you ready for the wind line? Yeah. Here it comes. Here okay. we go. Mm. I'm, I'm going to read you a quote. I'm getting focused. Focus. Okay. I'm going to read you a quote that you sent me, and I want you to speak into it. Oh, Lord have mercy. You ready for this? I hope I remember Grand it. Grand wisdom. Okay. Okay, here we go. This, okay. is a, this is a Beth Moore quote. Okay. I cannot caution you enough, Christian leaders in your 20s and 30s are with more genuine love and concern to be deeply merciful to people in word and in deed. Be very, very slow to condemn, cancel, and claim what you would never do, especially publicly. You have hardly begun to be tested. Yeah. Oh, that's a word, isn't it? That's a word. And I work with college students, and so I love, I love this age so much. So I'm going to, when I'm talking about this, I'm thinking about 18 to 22, 23, 24-year-olds, because those are the people that I'm closest to. And so I think, I think what the, the caution, yes, is, be very careful what you say on social media. Be very careful about what you say face to face, because we've all done it. Mm -hmm. I, there are things that I said in my 40s that I think you had no business. You did not know what you're talking about. And so I, I do, I think in this world of just, if, if we're not careful, we are, we can easily be a part of the, let me be a part of some kind of this division and that we're, we're right and you're wrong, or I believe this, but you believe that. And so I'm right and you're wrong. And it's this way, it's this way, this is the way. And I'm not talking about Jesus is the way, um, you know, just things that you just are so sold on mm -hmm. and that you we have the audacity on social media in our arrogance. We just think I am so right and they are so dumb and they don't know. Listen, unless you're Betty White and, and live to be that, that old, you have to be very careful about what you say. I would never, that is ridiculous. I don't support that or believe that because if I know anything to be a hundred percent true, 
as you age, not only do you get experience, of course, because you've just, you're, I mean, I'm almost, I'll be 52 in a week. I'll Yay. be 52 in seven days. And so not only are you getting experience, but your beliefs evolve. Your thought processes change. There were things that I look back on that I was so adamant about, and especially when it came to my kids. And then you just, you grow and you get some experience and, and, and life just begins to shape you and change you and your beliefs and your thoughts about certain things are gonna change and that's okay. So we don't need to be so quick Mm -hmm. to cancel, cut off, get rid of, make claims that things and people and ideas are, are ridiculous because that's just silly. <laughs> Think about when our kids were little and we're like, or before you had kids and you saw other people's kids, you're like, my kids will never. Oh, that's, listen, that's, that's exactly better, what yeah, they do. Don't ever let that come out of your mouth. It's no. just, it's ridiculous. And anyway, when you look back at, at that young college age, what, what do you remember about like, can you think of anything that, that changed that you just laugh at, that you thought or believed, and then, then what was true from then to now? This is, listen, I'm about to, I'm probably about to, I don't know, maybe I've not upset some people, but I think if you have high school students and you've, you've raised them the best that you can, of course we all are trying to do that. You've raised them up in the church. You've raised them to believe A, B, C, and D. You've raised them to, to think and to be um, com compassionate and to have a servant's heart and to be kind and all those things. You want them to love the Lord. You want them all this stuff. And then if their plan is to go to college and they leave your house, well then some of that like preciousness and that beautiful stuff that you just think, I've just worked so hard and raised them in this, and then it gets tested and they have to learn some things and they're going to fall. You cannot protect your kids from the world. It is absolutely impossible, no matter how good you've raised them, regardless of what type of institution they go to. I mean, my kids have all gone to a Christian university. The world still exists. Mm -hmm. You cannot, release them into that and just assume that they are never going to get hit by the world. Whether you're talking about moral decisions, what they're going to do with alcohol or sex or drugs or skipping class or whatever it is not going to class, you know, it's just going to happen. But I will say this, I'll say this, that at least in the Christian context of higher ed is that as a whole, we, we will pick them up and be a part of some restoration. That is our goal. That's that, beautiful. That is our goal. But a parent just needs to just understand that the world's going to hit them. And even the parent needs to decide how they're going to respond when their child falls, because they are. I've said it a million times. They're gonna fall academically, they're gonna fall socially, they're gonna fall relationally. They're going to make decisions that you wish they wouldn't have made. I don't know to what level and what degree, but you cannot keep the world away from your kid. And so what do we do with that? It's a hard thing to swallow because, I mean, you think about your daughter, Kaylee, who's a freshman. You want that image of Kaylee when she still lived in your house, right. you want it, You want that to be her for the next four years. She just kind of grew up a little bit. But the world is coming at her and after her, and these four years are gonna be rough. They're just gonna be hard. And so it's a hard thing to, to, to wanna believe that as parents, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be in how we love them and pick them up when we are even aware of how the world has come at them. Because a lot of times you're not going to be aware. You're not going to know how the world has hurt them. Well, and I'm, I'm realizing that when I swoop in and try to fix it, I'm a fixer. I'm the first one to try to manipulate, fix, protect. You know, I, in my mind, I think, well, I'm protecting her. Sure from something, but I've got to get out of God's way and let her learn the lesson right. and let him be her savior right. and not interfere. So as a parent with good intentions, mm -hmm. 
I'm getting yeah. in the way and causing a bigger mess. Well, our their whole life we've wanted to tell them just do this mm -hmm. and do this and do this and everything's going to mm -hmm. be okay. And that's, that works for a little while when they're in middle school, maybe. And then as they, with each year that goes by, they're testing it and they're testing it and they're testing it, which is what we're all doing. Yeah. I mean, every single one of us are screwing up. I am no different than an 18-year-old. My sin just looks different. I am not being tempted by the things that <clears throat> these college students are. I've done, I've gone through all that. That is, that is not my thing anymore. It was definitely my thing for a long period of time. But now my sin just looks different. So I'm no, I'm no different than them. And I hope that you, Angela, I hope that people have people in their lives that when I fall, you're there to pick me up. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, one more did quote. Did that even answer the dang Absolutely question? Absolutely <laughs> it did. Absolutely it did. Okay. Um, okay, one more quote. Okay. You got one more in you? Okay, maybe. This is from She Reads Truth. This okay. is really good, too. And you and I talked about it a little bit. We did, because I don't remember. It's been a while. Okay. If the disciples had been running Jesus' ministry, mm -hmm. the Samaritan woman at the well mm -hmm. never would have been saved. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Well, I think too. I think I'm uh, I, I'm learning. I'm I'm spending a lot of time lately thinking about how did Jesus love people? Mm -hmm. How did Jesus love? How people? did Jesus? Yeah, because here's what we know. We know that in our flesh, that we can sit here and say, "I'm compassionate. I I want that person to know the Lord." I, I hate it that that part of the world has hit them and life is hard, whether it's decisions they've made, the way they've been raised. But when the rubber really meets the road and you encounter somebody that you don't understand, that is very different from you, that, that maybe has sin that you cannot resonate with, that we're going to judge. Mm -hmm. We are. <clears throat> and so I just think, I think about the woman at the well. I mean, she's just the absolute best in how Jesus just, he, he loved her. He met her exactly where she was, loved her, told her truth. But who is it that when we tell truth to, they say, I want you to know the person, this Jesus, that knows me better than anybody, that loved me enough to call it out, but I was still welcome with them. You know, I mean, we I don't, we have to work really hard to know how to do that. And I think the greatest way that we know, we learn how to do that, and it doesn't just become a, oh, well, I need to do this, and I need to remember this, is we've got to put ourselves in situations where we are around people. Mm -hmm that challenge us in that way. I know for you as an attorney, you are with people that are that have challenging situations. For me, I learned how to do that through jail ministry and through the mission field. And so I I don't want to judge. I catch myself real quick in a default uh, or when I catch myself defaulting to judge, it's like no no no, no ma'am. You have no right to say, well, you're an idiot. What were you doing, you know, thinking you were going to go murder somebody? Right. Like, you can't. And I, I just think we have to go and, and we have to know the heart of Jesus. We've got to know him. If we aren't sure how to love people and how to treat the body of Christ, we've got to go, we've got to go spend some time in the Gospels. And, and remember the salvation that we experience. Yes. You know, we, we forget yes. our rescue. That's right. And and it keep my job keeps me humble. Yes. Let me say that. Um, as an attorney this morning, you know, a, a lot of y'all saw my post and prayed. I had a situation where regardless of my legal knowledge, I knew I was so in over my head mm. because there is a family with a child at stake. And that's oftentimes the case. Right. You've got a judge making a decision. And it just, I was flat on my face. Just, this is how we fight our battles. Mm -hmm. I found a scripture verse. Mm -hmm. I clung to it. Mm -hmm. I, I got you involved. Everybody on social media that would pray, I just, you know, vaguely put it out there. But we've got to 
stay in the word. We've got to know where our power comes from and we've got to claim it like we believe it. Well, the, the disciples were people. They were broken people. Jesus is, was not a broken person. That's right. And so they had to watch him. Right. They had to follow his lead there. And so I hate, you know, remember back in the whenevers, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, I mean, it's true. Yeah. What would Jesus do with that situation, that person, that decision? What would he do? Bring the bracelets back. Bring the bracelets back. <laughs> Okay. That's good. That what is else? Good. We gotta love God and love people. That's right. I don't love know what else God. to say. Beyond love God that. and love people. That's right. Well, this is good. Are we done? You, you got know? nothing else? I, I think we've on covered. Your list? A, I think we've covered a lot. Angela, you can Yeah, we did cover a lot. People are probably like, "Oh my God, we've gone from swans to Jesus and back again." Cheer season. That's what we do. <laughs> That's where we shine. Ridiculous, spiritual, and back again. Yeah. Okay, everybody, this was a lot of fun. As always, we love having you listen to Rambling Through Everyday Life with Fran and Angela. Next week. Yes. Y'all. Oh, I almost forgot. We have got a New York Times bestselling author. You do not want to nope. miss her interview. It's so fun. It's so fun. It's so fun. That's right. Okay, everybody, thanks for listening. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. That was that so was fun. fun. Okay, there you have it, everybody. Now do a TikTok dance. <laughs> Avery, I need a TikTok dance. I don't know any. I don't know any right now. I don't know. Let's see. I got nothing. <laughs> I'm not the dancer. That's for you. Oh, good times, everybody. Okay. Bye.